Werewolves at their most basic are about the mixing of two things to create something new, the ultimate communion of beast with man, and in most horror films, somehow, the inevitable result of white people traveling while on vacation. Thus you ended up with the werewolf of film, a man overtaken by the call of the wild, or in other ways, an animal that is overwhelmingly compelled to wear pants. Man transforming into another shape, an animalistic form, and the werewolf myth is something that seems elemental to man's imagination. Most areas of the world have their own version of the werewolf myth. In Mexico, in parts, it's the Nahual, a totem animal that associates to a human at their birth, giving them unnatural abilities. One such story of a creature like that was told in 1983's Cazador de Demonios, or Demon Hunter. Here in the village of Creel in Chihuahua, Mexico, something is about to be born. It's not the child that dies when a witch doctor interferes of a troubled pregnancy. No, it's something else. For causing the death of his son, potentially right or wrong. The father swears revenge on the witch doctor for interfering. And though the birth has failed, something was delivered anyway. The doom of the living. And of course, that revenge is murder. The father carries out his grisly deed at night, slaying the brujo, his corpse left lying across an image of the wolf. That wolf is the witch doctor's wolf. It's his totem animal. The police don't know who killed the brujo, but the villagers do. They tell the murderer father that it wasn't just a brujo or even a witch doctor that you tried to kill. That was a nahual, something you cannot kill, but you will be killed by. The father, fearing that they are right, grabs a handy Jesus-shaped knife and does what anyone does when they worry about the dead not staying dead. He digs up the brujo's body, giving birth to a fiend from the earth, the Nahual, a wolf man beast that of course kills him, but then also begins killing everyone it can. Animal, man, woman, child. Gee, thanks dad. With the beast stalking the countryside, who will be the titular hunter of the demon? Will it be the police who are headquartered in bedrock apparently? The scientist researching the saliva of wounds. The former Satanist now preacher who angrily condemns communists for some reason at the start of the film. Or is it this guy with the snazzy hat? Demon Hunter is a mixed creature that lopes between being bombastically silly and then goes back to being sometimes spooky, never really slowing down into a boring pace on its way between the two, thankfully. The movie's chief strength are its multiple creative moments, like the ghost of the Brujo, who appears to float away from an actor in one scene before disappearing. It's incredibly eerie, even in daylight, and I really like that part. I love when the priest again angrily condemns communist whores and two slackers, Lupe and Chima, at the start of the film. He's just ranting, and it's like, what the hell? Who are these people, by the way? Uh, well, of course, like any good movie, they're talking about people you haven't even seen yet. They end up being two comedic relief characters, like... Vulcan Skull from the Power Rangers. Although, instead of harassing teens at a juice bar, they're harassing everyone's wife in the shower. They bring the chuckles reliably until they get their throats slashed, trying to rape somebody. Ha <laughs> ha, rape. Classic Lupe and Chima. As you've seen, Demon Hunter clearly has ideas to share with the audience, and it's willing to kill real animals and show dead movie children to deliver those ideas. This layer of shamelessness, honestly, it's not offensive, it has a charm to it. It's totally Mexico in the 1980s. Mexican cinema in the 1980s was truly the most werewolf of movie makers. It wasn't too big budget and proper to hold back on the blood, especially kids' blood, but it also wasn't so crazy that it forgot to wear those pants and maintain a decent movie structure. That said, it's not a perfect animal. Demon Hunter has a problem with throwing random scenes at you near the end. Like, the editor just got loaded, figured he was an artiste, and he was just gonna blow your mind with symbolism. But then he woke up, hung over in the edit bay. Where, where am I? So enjoy the last 30 minutes of Demon Hunter, which feature a random blinding appearance by Satan in a dungeon, a crowd of unknown people burning an also unknown man to death, and a Bigfoot hunter making a cameo. It's pretty neat. At this point, when you're watching this film, you're just accepting whatever comes your way. So when a character throws the Jesus-shaped knife at a werewolf, his hand powering up visibly on screen like a video game cross, you'll cheer. Even when it's fucking up, it's beautiful. Until the biggest moment, which is also my biggest issue with werewolf movies, the beast itself, the werewolf. The monster in these films has to look good. It has to be scary, or you're gonna have problems. Well, problems, unlike the editor, the SFX crew, and director knew they'd fucked up. 
They wisely chose to hide their monster in the darkness, even hiring Satan to provide a stand-in role to help pad things out. But it really doesn't work because the briefest shots reveal that the werewolf of Demon Hunter is really just a sexually mature Teddy Ruxpin on a cocaine bender. Yikes. That all said, I really appreciate a good mustache Bigfoot Hunter cameo. That makes up for so much. So I give Demon Hunter three Jesus daggers out of five. If you can't get a decent werewolf and demon hunter, at least you can get the knife. Get the knife.